Hi everyone, today I'm working on my 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 with the 5.9 liter Magnum engine and I'm going to be replacing the throttle position sensor which you're looking at right here attaches to the side of the throttle body and gives the computer the uh, signal from the uh, throttle telling it what position the throttle is actually in hence the name throttle position sensor um, I'm doing this because I'm, I've been chasing a kind of a sporadic performance issue on the in, on this vehicle for a while. Some days it drives great, other days it drives like it's towing a loaded down trailer. And I haven't been able to figure out what's going on. Um, there's certain days where the gas pedal actually feels like there's some resistance in, uh, in pushing it down. And at that same time is when the truck seems to bog down some. So. I don't see any resistance on the actual throttle cable, so I figured this is the original throttle position sensor as, as far as I know. Um, I've had the truck since it had 44,000 miles on it and I, I just passed 180,000, so this particular sensor has got at least 140,000 miles on it. And I don't know if this is going to solve the problem, but um, I figured for about, I think this cost about 30 or $35 on rockauto.com, um, I figured this was one of the less expensive things that I can try replacing. I don't like just randomly throwing parts into things, but um, it seems like this might be a likely source of my problem. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, obviously the first thing we need to do is remove the existing sensor, but before that I want to go ahead and disconnect the negative battery cable uh, just to be safe. Anytime I'm working in the engine bay with any wiring, it's not likely that you'll short something out, but it, of course it's possible. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the negative battery cable. That should be a 10 millimeter nut. And then I'll come in here and remove the two retaining screws on either side of the throttle position sensor. I believe they're T25 Torx screws. There's one there, one there. And of course we'll have to undo this electrical connector here. So let me remove the battery cable and then uh, we'll work on getting the old sensor out. Okay, I've got the negative battery cable disconnected now, so we can go ahead and work on removing the old sensor. And as I said, first things first, we need to remove the electrical connector, which should just be a squeeze type connector. If you push this, depress this tab with your thumb and pull, the connector should come loose. So let's try that. There we go. Now we need to work on removing those two screws, which as I said again are uh, T25 Torx head which let's see if I can get my camera to focus. Sometimes it's called a star bit. Hopefully you can see that on on screen, but uh, you can see the shape of the bit. That's a little bit better. Looks like a star. So we just need to insert the torque screwdriver um, and lefty loosey remove these two retaining screws. So I'm going to work on that get these removed and then we'll pull the sensor out of its housing. Okay, I've got the two torque screws removed. Now we're ready to pull the uh, throttle position sensor out of the housing. And we should be able to just pull it straight out. It's pretty loose, yep. And you can kind of see how this works. There is a uh, rectangular shaft coming out of the housing there that's connected to the throttle plate. And so when that throttle plate is opened, this shaft turns, which in turn rotates this collar inside. I don't know if you can see, but it's got two little tabs that that shaft pushes against and turns that inside. And basically, I think this is a like a potentiometer that just sends a um, low voltage signal to the um, computer and tells basically it, the computer looks for the voltage range and I guess um, each throttle position uh, corresponds to a certain voltage so that's how the computer knows um, what the throttle is doing and I guess can adjust the fuel trims accordingly. Um, now I noticed something interesting here when I pulled this off just now there was no gasket with it um, and in looking at the new part that I got it actually came with two different gaskets and I was just reading the instructions and it says that uh, you have to select one of these 
um, based on the the housing that you have. Now it says there's the yeah, O-ring should be used if there's a uh, if there's a groove in the housing to receive the rubber O-ring. Um, if there's no O-ring groove, then we're supposed to use the, uh, the flat gasket. I don't see a groove in here. Um, it looks, looks smooth, so I think that uh, I'll go with the flat gasket. I'm not sure which, um, which years or, or makes of, excuse me, which years, um, production years of this truck um, use the different gaskets. This is the first time I've replaced this, so just pay special attention to that if you're tackling this project on your own. Um, now, I'll probably get some carb cleaner maybe and just gently clean this mating surface and maybe up inside there if I can. I don't know that that really makes much of a difference, but um, let me get this cleaned up a little bit. I'll just wipe it down gently, try to get any residue off this gasket surface, and then we'll be ready to reinstall the new sensor. So uh, let me clean a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the gasket surface cleaned up a little bit. Looks a little bit better than it did. So I'm ready to go ahead and put the new sensor in. Um, once again, um, I ordered this from Rock Auto and I purchased the Delphi sensor. Uh, it's my understanding that this is the OEM part. Let's see if I can give you a shot of the part number. So I can get this to focus. Come on camera. There we go, it's a little bit better. But again, I've read that uh, other people have used non-OEM sensors and have had problems. So um, I figured it's best to just use what Chrysler recommends. Um, so I'm ready to go ahead and put the new sensor in. Uh, it came with everything I needed. Uh, of course, the sensor it came with the gasket. And it actually came with two new screws. Uh, you can see I've, I'm going to go ahead and use them. I've got some anti-seize lubricant on the end just to make sure that... If I ever had to take this out in the future, it'll be a little bit easier. So basically the, the new sensor goes in the same way the old one um, came out, with the exception of we're going to use this gasket. It just slips over the collar there, like that. Um, I'm wondering if possibly part of my problem was the fact that there was no gasket. Um, I don't believe this has ever been removed since I've owned the truck, but I guess it's possible that there could be a small vacuum leak created by not having a gasket there. I assume that there's probably some sort of a seal around that shaft going into the throttle, but it's possible that some air could leak by there. I'm not totally sure about that. Um, maybe somebody can chime in and set me correct on that, but anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this in and see what happens. Now, the uh, you kind of have to put it in at a little bit of an angle. You want your, obviously you want the gasket holes to line up with the screw holes, but you have to get this shaft to engage with the little tabs on the back here. Come on camera, focus. Once again, those tabs have to interlock with the shaft. Um, sorry, this is not the best camera angle, but you have to put it in at a little bit of an angle and then rotate it into place. And you'll feel it um, go in the correct position. And obviously the electrical connector goes on the bottom just like when we took it off. So once you get into position then you can go ahead and run the screws in. I'm going to need both hands to secure it so I won't be able to film that portion but uh, it's very straightforward. So let me get this back into place and then we'll remake the electrical connection and Hopefully this will improve the performance of my truck. Um, I meant to mention earlier that one of the other benefits of disconnecting your battery while you do this is that um, it should clear the computer. So if you did have a faulty throttle position sensor, this should uh, clear the computer and it will start to relearn um, based on the new parameters that sensors give it. Um, so it, that'll clear out any bad data that it's been using to operate and should make your engine run a little bit better. So anyway, let me get the new sensor in and we'll make the connection and wrap up this project. Okay, I've got the new sensor in position. Um, the, uh, the torque spec on the uh, two Torx screws 
uh, that hold it in place is actually 60 inch pounds. I checked the manual on that, so just be uh, be careful with that. Um, don't confuse inch pounds and foot pounds because you'll break the bolts off or crack something or strip them out. So um, 60 inch pounds is not a whole lot of um, a whole lot of force. Now, uh, before we finish this up, I do want to check the operation of the throttle for any binding, just to make sure that I've got this thing installed correctly so you can pull on the throttle um, cable bracket and operate the butterfly valve. And this is moving smoothly with no resistance, uh, no abnormal resistance. So it looks like everything's installed properly. So we can go ahead and finish up. So last thing we've got to do is reconnect the electrical connector. I like to use a little dab of dielectric grease on there. I don't know if you can see that, but that just keeps water out of the connections. And this will slide back on the same way that it came off. Just push it in until it clicks into place and give it a tug to make sure that it's locked in good. And we're done. So now I can reconnect my battery and uh, take the truck out for a drive and see how it does. Um, I'll monitor this for the next few days and see if I notice any performance and, um, improvement. If it drives well every day, I may have solved my problem. If not, then I'll keep looking, um, see if I can find another issue. But in any case, I know that my throttle position sensor will be good for a while. So this is a quick, simple little project. It's probably taken me 20 minutes, um, including filming, which takes extra time. So anybody can handle this with a few simple tools. Once again, you need a uh, T25 Torx screwdriver, um, and that's really the only special specialty tool you need. So this is something anybody can do in their driveway in a few minutes, save a few bucks. I'm not sure what a shop would charge to do this, but um, just the cost of the part is all I had to spend. So this is a simple job, and um, I hope you'll find this video helpful if you take this on yourself. Thanks for watching, and good luck.